Hey there, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rabelais, and in this video, I'm going to describe the many ways a springing power of attorney can spring into effect. First, let's discuss what a springing power of attorney is. A power of attorney, from an estate planning perspective, is its own standalone legal document that gives someone else, often referred to as an agent or attorney in fact, we'll use agent for this video, the power during your lifetime to transact on your behalf. It's, it's commonly used if you are incapacitated and unable to transact matters for yourself, such as a property sale or purchase, vehicle sale, or a financial transaction. Powers of attorney are typically either effective immediately, which means when they're signed, or some powers of attorney are effective when you become incapacitated. These powers of attorney that have no effect until you become incapacitated are often referred to as a springing power of attorney because they spring into effect when you become incapacitated and you can no longer transact for yourself. For, for yourself. Let me give you an example. Let's say Pete creates a power of attorney. Pete knows it's good practice to set up a power of attorney as part of an overall estate plan. Because Pete is the one establishing the power of attorney, Pete is referred to as the principal. On Pete's power of attorney, Pete designates his wife, Ariel, as his agent. The agent is the person who has power of attorney for Pete. Pete also does the wise thing and designates an alternate agent, his adult daughter, Abby. So Pete wants Ariel to be his agent and Abby to be the alternate agent. Initially, Pete is not really comfortable making his power of attorney effective immediately. He is concerned that Ariel or Abby one day might get a hold of the power of attorney document, run to Pete's bank, and wipe Pete clean. By the way, if Pete is concerned about that, then maybe Pete shouldn't be naming Ariel or Abby as an agent on the power of attorney. But nonetheless, Pete thinks to himself, I'm going to make my power of attorney a springing power of attorney because I don't want Ariel or Abby to be able to touch my stuff unless I'm incapacitated. So Pete signs his power of attorney and it sits there for a few years until one day Pete has a mild stroke. He loses some of his function. He can't drive. He's, he's off. Pete and his wife Ariel need to sell their home and buy another home. But getting Pete out of the house is difficult and really it's questionable whether Pete can sign a bunch of house sale and purchase documents. At that point, Ariel says, I have power of attorney for Pete. I'll sign everything for him. So the title company inspects Pete's power of attorney and they realize it is a springing power of attorney that says Ariel can only sign for Pete if Pete is incapacitated. So how do you determine whether Pete is incapacitated for purposes of the power of attorney? Well, the first thing you do is you look to the power of attorney instrument Pete signed to see if it describes a definition for incapacity. Maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. Now, if you make a springing power of attorney, how will your incapacity be defined? It could be defined in your springing power of attorney in a number of different ways. Incapacity could be defined as when a doctor provides in writing that you can't effectively manage your property or financial affairs, or it could be defined as when two doctors provide in writing that you can't effectively manage your property or financial affairs. Or incapacity could be fined in a power of attorney as when a court determines you are disabled, incompetent, or legally incapacitated. Or should your power of attorney spring into effect if you've disappeared for 30 or 60 days? Or should it spring, spring into effect if you've been detained or kidnapped? So the problem with a springing power of attorney is that instead of immediately being able to use the power of attorney when the need arises, the agent must get this determination of incapacity before using the power of attorney and getting doctors to sign statements or affidavits that you are incapacitated can be a real hassle for your agent, particularly if it is at a time when your agent is under the gun to get things done on your behalf. But let's say Ariel went through the hassle of getting Pete's doctors to examine Pete and, and the doctors sign the appropriate written documents that declare Pete unable to act for himself. Now finally, Ariel can act for Pete. But what if Ariel then gets sick or in an accident or gets demented and Ariel is now unable to act for Pete? What does their daughter Abby have to do to now act for Pete? Because remember, Pete named Ariel his first agent and Abby his alternate agent. 
What's the standard for an alternate agent to jump into that agent role because the agent is now incapacitated? Does the alternate agent, to use Pete's power of attorney, have to get doctor statements from both Pete's doctors and Ariel's doctors to use Pete's power of attorney? Sounds like a real hassle. That's why when many people make a power of attorney, they make it effective immediately. If Pete's power of attorney was effective immediately when signed, then Ariel could have transacted for Pete the moment it was necessary without having to run around to hospitals and doctor's office to ha offices to have Pete examined by physicians and hope that the physician will put his or her neck on the line by signing statements acknowledging that Pete is incapacitated. So when you make a power of attorney, especially if you have the total and implicit trust in the agent you intend to appoint, you, can, you should consider making that power of attorney effective immediately, meaning when signed, versus making it a springing power of attorney. Even if your power of attorney is immediate, you can still transact for yourself while you are alive and well, but your immediate power of attorney will make it easier for your agent to act for you when you become incapable, which is when most powers of attorney get used. And finally, the other thing that you want to make immediate is to immediately hit the, sus the subscribe and the like button so that my future videos will spring onto your screen when you open YouTube in the future. Now have a great day.